Hey guys, what's up? Today we have Kurt Faldi with us, and he's going to talk to us about the Enhanced Mitigation Experience Toolkit. And uh, so let's get started. Hey, Kurt, how's it going, bud? Hey, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, so we're both in Charlotte. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, there's quite a few of us here, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, this site has grown bigger than than you can imagine. Um, yep. Yeah, I, I've only worked at the Charlotte site, and I've been here almost 25 years, so it's it's crazy how big this site has gotten. You've got me outpaced a little bit. I've been at the company about 11 years now, in the Charlotte region about eight. So, oh, yeah. cool, yeah. Where'd you start? I was a RE or PFE up in the D.C. area for almost three years when I started, and then I switched to CSS security here in the Charlotte office and the phone queues for about four years, and then been back as PFE for about four years approximately now. Awesome. And speaking of security, can you tell us a little bit about what the EMET actually is? <laughs> so Emmet, or <laughs> as we like to call it, or Enhanced Mitigations Experience Toolkit, is... It's been around for a little while now from a product perspective, so it ex you know exists as a product. It's sort of a, a class of tool sets that's being called like an anti-exploit toolkit, basically. Um, we're starting to see more products by vendors um, along the same niche, shall we say. Um, a number of the endpoint security products are starting to incorporate some of these techniques and these ideas, but the base idea behind them is that it isn't... Um, signature based necessarily like an antivirus client so it's not looking at specific signatures of pieces of malware but it's actually looking at techniques that the exploit uses prior to the actual virus or piece of malware or whatever being installed on the system so if you're browsing by like a website that's trying to drop you know drop something on your system typically there's a number of different techniques that they use to do that. And we look for behavior of those initial techniques and not the actual like file signatures or something of that nature. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So um, you sent me a list of, uh, I, I, it looks like it's a uh, kind of a daily, this is what we cover in each day of the training type synopsis. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, I sort of wanted to cover what we call the POP Emmet deliverable. I think POP stands for Proactive Operations Program. Okay. And we, this is sort of set up like a, a teach you how to fish sort of thing. And basically what we're doing is a, a two-day thing. The first day is all training. The second day is implement it in the customer's environment. A lot of times it's in a customer's lab environment, but I've had customers as well that do it with, you know, production machines. Sometimes they'll choose the IT people and, you know, make them guinea pigs and throw that on their boxes. Um, but, but the base idea is we come in and the first day we're doing a bunch of training on the product. So it, it's beneficial, you know, for I anyone that's going to be, you know, dealing with the product in their environment. A lot of times... We get the requests from the security group of the organization. Sometimes we get it from endpoint engineering instead. Um, sometimes Active Directory people get involved with it because usually Active Directory plays a role in configuration of the product. Um, but yeah, the first day, it's usually a conglomerate of different people that show up for the training perspective of it. And we go through a number of things from a training perspective. So the, the first item that we cover is more of an intro to the client. You know, what's this about? Because, you know, security may have dragged us in there to do the job because they want to lock down their systems better. But a lot of times the other groups have no idea what this product is whatsoever. So we got to, you know, give them an intro to what the product is, what it does, what's available. And then we start digging deeper into details on it. So the next one is architecture of Emmet. So we go into details about how the actual client works. So we cover what the service does. We cover what the little tray agent does with regards to, you know, popping up and when things happen, how it detects things and how it blocks things. Um, from there, we move into the, the mitigations component. So the mitigations component is a little bit long. It's a little bit dry, I'll be honest. But it's a, it's a very in-depth look at each one of the mitigations. So one thing that's interesting about this product, it's called a toolkit, is the last, you know, the T in Emmet stands for toolkit. And it's sort of a, a conglomerate of multiple different anti-exploit things. So some of them are memory mitigation anti-exploit items. 
There's SSL pinning, which prevents, you know, um, a man in the middle attack against an SSL website. There's some extra things that we've added with the AF Plus recently, which is another sort of memory mitigation technique. Um, we have some stuff coming up on the radar, too. They're looking at an Emmet 6.0 sometime, hopefully here in the next year, the product group is talking about, that may have some new anti-exploit techniques, which don't even match with any of the current exploit techniques from a functionality type thing. They'll, they'll be new and interesting. Um, but anyway, in the mitigations module, we drill down into each one of these mitigations and, you know, cover how it works, what it does. And that's just to, you know, give you a deeper understanding of what the client does. From there, we move into implementation. So we cover, and that's a really short module in general. It's, you know, how do we get this out to the clients? How do we deploy it? Do we, you know, deploy with initial configuration or an empty configuration? What the command line switches are, you know, from a quiet, silent install type of thing, what you'll use to install it. We move on to configuration after that. So there's a number of ways we can configure and we cover each way. We talk about whether we want to use GPOs, whether we want to use local policy or GPO configured policy, the differences between those. Um, XML based policy has some differences and things that it can do versus GPO policy. Mm -hmm. um, so we spend quite a bit of time on that. And then following that, we do some reporting. So the, the way the product is currently, it's a free product, right? So you can just go download it. There's no extra cost to you. <laughs> um, you just aka.ms slash Emmet will, will get you pointed in the right director, direction if you're interested in it. And reporting, we don't really have, there's not like a system center console, right? So we don't have a, right. a main reporting console at the moment. So we run through what's available to you to report on. So we have event IDs that get logged locally in the application event log for the client for everything that happens. So we run through how you can get those or how you can you know, aggregate those to actually take a look at that data. So what we typically do is point out, you can use Windows Event Forwarding that's built into our OS. You can forward up all these events, the ones that you're interested in, so the ones that show things like, we detected something bad, so forward those up. Um, and then on the forwarding server, we walk through a method where you can use some PowerShell, we can dump this out, we can show it in an Excel spreadsheet, use some of our new BI stuff that's built into Excel, so we use some Power um, Pivot for importing it, we use some Power um, View to make some pretty looking spreadsheets <laughs> that have various things put out of them. And that's the reporting piece. Once we finished up there, we go through a troubleshooting module. And this is more for help desk personnel to give them a feel. Of this. These are the types of things that you do when you run into problems. So if I run into a perf problem if I, after I've added Emmet. So say, for example, Word suddenly takes two minutes to load after adding Emmet how to troubleshoot that and figure out what do I need to do from like an exclusion perspective, where do I need to go to get help if I need to actually contact Microsoft and try to troubleshoot this further and possibly, you know, send like dump files from it or things of that nature. Um, but we spend some time there. So that's yeah. the first day basically of training and, you know, going through everything with the customer. Yeah, so it sounds like it's a it's a kind of a conglomeration of tools that a customer can use to detect security related issues. Yep, absolutely. Okay. So is this something that a customer can order through Premier? Yeah, so this Pop Emmet deliverable, absolutely. This is in the Premier catalog of items that you can order. It's a two day deliverable. This is available globally. We have engineers in every region of the world basically that are trained on this and available to deliver it. We've done a number of these in the US this past year. And yes, absolutely. Is there any way I can get you to give us a demo of one of the tools? Uh, I Well, good question. I could give you a demo of the reporting feature. I don't have, let me think. I would have to set up, and I don't have set up to show like a, um, a mitigation being triggered on a box at the moment because I don't have that set up at the moment. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 that's okay. But the, I think the reporting stuff would be cool to see. All right, give me a second. Let me see if I can pull that up real quick. All right. All right. 
I know Lex said something about possibly showing off some demos here. So basically what I'd like to show is a couple of different items. I don't have one set up to show an actual mitigation right at this moment, but what I would like to show from our event log perspective is a couple of actual events. So I'm not sure how well this will show up on the video, but when we detect an item, we throw all our detections into the normal application event log. So here I filtered down on detection items. So you can see it comes in as a source of Emmet. And in this case, nice. In this case, you can see Emmet detected. In this case, it was called the stack pivot mitigation. So that is one of our mitigation types. And we have depth mitigation, mandatory ASLR mitigation. I, I basically have a script running that is generating fake mitigations with fake application names on this system. So I'm not really detecting all sorts of bad things on my box. I'm just creating events that I can use from a reporting perspective. So this is what it looks like normally when you'd see things on client machines. So what we do with this in turn is we set up a Windows event forwarding setup and we forward all of these events up to a centralized system. And while we're on site with a customer, we usually get this all set up. And in turn, we set up some PowerShell and we dump that PowerShell out to a CSV file. And then we use Excel 2013 and Excel 2013, our Excel group has been doing some awesome work on. So we got a bunch of Power BI stuff now that, that makes... Data analytics a lot easier for an IT pro. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I am not what I would consider a BI guy, but we're me and another guy, another engineer, Scott Duffy, out of Australia, been doing a bunch of work on this. But we import this this data into the data model inside of Excel, and we use currently Power Pivot to import that into the data model. We're looking at doing Power Query instead with some other items. And then we have a, a Power View workbook, basically. So we have a number of sheets in here that are using Power View to display items. So, for example, mitigations this month, I can see, okay, how many of each type of mitigation did I have? You know, whether ASR was the top or DEP or stack pivot or whatever. And then I can also see by application. So if I wanted to filter, for example, by Internet Explorer... I can click on Internet Explorer and then it'll filter out the other items as well and show me, hey, within Internet Explorer is mostly ASR mitigations that were happening. Or I can click again and clear that out and all the various beautiful things there. So, so those are mitigations. Those are things that we've detected and fixed? Right. We've okay. detected and blocked, basically. Okay. So the way that we don't... Emmet doesn't fix like an antivirus does. Basically, when we detect, we block. It's more of an active blocking technology. Okay. I mean, is there any... Just, I have to ask this question, right? Is there mm -hmm. any... Do we have any precedence of us blocking something that we think looks like <laughs> an issue but actually isn't an issue? Absolutely. <laughs> and this yeah. is part of why we give this tool set to you and part of why we teach you the troubleshooting because... I stress this over and over. When you are rolling out this product, you absolutely must do a good pilot. You have to figure out, hey, there are false positives that occur. You may have a plugin that you use within Word or Outlook or Adobe Reader or whatever that does not get along well with them in some cases. And sometimes you can get that fixed between us and the vendor, and sometimes you can't. Sometimes we've seen, for example, some you know DLP slash R. IRM, you know, rights management type pieces of software that plug into various applications that, that you know, hook at a lower level and they basically conflict with Emmet. Emmet detects, you know, that low level hooking that they do as something that's not appropriate for most software, shall we say. Yeah. Um, and when that comes up, you know, if you can get it fixed between the vendors, then that's one thing. If not, then you have to you know, proactively from an IT pro or somebody that's managing this, I want to see when that's happening. I want to detect it, be proactive about it, and put, you know, an exclusion in place and go about business after that. That, that, that was my next question. So if we do have a mitigation that for some reason is going to have to exist, you yep. know, so, some event that's going to have to exist, we yep. can build exclusions around it. And I, I'm assuming those exclusions are very, very focused so that, yep. in other words, we're not – we're not just saying, oh, it happened in Internet Explorer, so we'll just exclude all Internet Explorer stuff, right? We can be a lot more granular than that. Absolutely. I'm pulling up the GUI here 
for the Emmet client. So within the Emmet client, I can go to apps and it will show me all the applications and the, you know, this system that are protected, for example. So, so here's Acrobat Reader, right? So say, for yeah. example, I have Acro Reader and Acro Reader is having, I've got a plugin that I use from a DRM perspective with PDF documents that plugs into Reader, and I'm having it trigger the EAF mitigation, which this is based off a real case, actually. <laughs> so what the customer ended up having to do was uncheck that mitigation. So a specific mitigation for a specific program, save that, and that was it. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. All right. So... That's what we have in the Excel thing. We've got a number of different worksheets there. We have mitigations. We have users and computers, so you can filter by the top users or the top computers, and you can see who your you know, most offending actors are <laughs> within your organization. Um, we have ASR mitigations. So ASR mitigation shows you URLs that have triggered within our attack surface reduction blocker, which is another... It, it basically blocks various modules, so it blocks like Java on the internet, but not on the intranet. So you want to see when that's blocking a certain site, and if you need to go create an exclusion for that as well. Yeah. Um, and then we have like an all data slicer sheet. So if you've ever used a pivot slicer sheet, this is all the data that's in the data model, and then you can you know pick an individual item, and it filters all the other items based on picking that item. So in this case, I picked Lab MS2 host. And it shows me everything that correlates with that specific host, you know, timestamps, mitigation names, modules, URLs, et cetera. Yeah. So it sounds like, excuse me, sorry. It sounds like we have a great tool that um, customers can use to identify exploits. If we need to build exclusions because of some known issue with some known product, we can easily build a very targeted exclusion. Right. And uh, uh, the thing... The thing here is is that you don't just need the tool. You need the tool and you need the training to understand how to use the tool. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely need to do a good pilot of it and, and figure out what works and what doesn't. The last thing I wanted to pull up here, we haven't done this yet with a customer. This is something that we're working on. And once we you know pilot this a couple of times with some customers, we're taking that same reporting thing and – trying to put it in the cloud, right? So we're taking the same reporting thing and we're trying to put this up to an, instead of a CSV file loaded into Excel that we throw it into an Azure table storage item, mm -hmm. so no SQL storage. And we have Power BI preview in the cloud. And basically we create a workbook that uses Power Query to connect to that Azure table storage. And it's the same sort of thing, except that it's in a web browser. So you get top users, top computers, top applications, top mitigations over the month. Um, ASR mitigations, things of that nature. So it's the same sort of idea, but it's up in a browser. There are actually apps for iOS, for Windows. Um, I, I know the whole Doe family. Just so, just <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yep, we're, we're working on piloting that soon with some users, and that's, that's a future development. And uh, the last thing I wanted to cover here is basically we covered the first day and what we do from a training perspective, and I showed a couple of the reporting type things and whatever. But the second day, so it's a two-day deliverable, the second day is implementation or proof of concept in a customer's environment. Um, so usually we're working with you know people that have the ability to install things on clients that you know, have the ability to set up GPOs, that can set up Windows event forwarding. But the idea is that we work with the customer, we set this up on a number of clients in their environment, sometimes in the lab, sometimes you know, they use some of their own individuals. But we implement on up to 10 clients. We like to do it on systems that are indicative of the customer's baseline images, right? So we, we want to install it on systems that already have their default installs of their applications. That way we can see issues because as part of the implementation, we're going to install it, and then we're going to run through a little test matrix of all these apps. So we're going to start up Word. We're going to start up Outlook. We're going to try to save a document, save an Excel document, a PowerPoint document, open up PDFs. And this gives us a – and also the, it gives the customer a real feel of how I troubleshoot these, if I do see any issues with them, how I create exclusions for those – and once we run through this test matrix, we, we, the outcome of this is that we actually have a sort of working 
configuration that we can use for their environment. This is not a full featured, you know, we're going to test every little button inside of Outlook or whatever, but it's more of a, a quick run through to try to get an idea if we have any crashes or perf things that pop up. So we set up that you know, the outcome of that that testing basically gives us configuration that we can use we apply that to the systems via gpos then when we run through in their environment we set up a windows event forwarding setup we have some scripts that we use with them that we generate a bunch of detection data so it's fake detection data we forward that all up to a system we dump it out of that system with powershell and we pull it into some excel reporting and basically we, we sort of get them set up to, to move on from there on with you know, what they're going to do in their environment so they can start, you know, going further with a farther implementation or proof of concept in their environment. Cool. Yeah, that's neat stuff. I think the thing that uh, customers need to take out of this, right, is that, you know, by default, you can have certain types of protections in place. You can, you know, you can have your firewall set up correctly. You can have antivirus installed, et cetera. Um, and those will catch a lot of things. But this this is really cool because it not only, you know, hooks key components in the OS and reports on things, it also does the same thing for applications. And it gives you a central site that you can go to and, and look at to figure out what types of things we've detected and had to mitigate. And, and you know, that's huge, especially today when you see, you know, in the headlines every 10 minutes, you know, some... Some agency's gotten hacked. Some federal government agency's gotten hacked, or some some big Fortune 500 company has lost all your credit card data, or you know their entire email list is now available for anybody to read in China. Um, I mean, it's just crazy some of the things that that customers have to deal with now from a security standpoint. And it's not all you know stuff that you would normally suspect. Like in the old days, if there was some issue. Mostly it was, oh, well, that's probably some bug that some programmer has to go and fix to close that, that hole. Now we have so many social engineering exploits, you know, where somebody sends you a piece of email and you click on a link and it installs something. You know, that's not a code bug. That's yep. not something that we can, we can fix in the OS. We can try and mitigate some of the things that that rogue piece of code can go out and do. But at some point, you know, you just get to a point where there's not really a lot you can do if you want applications to continue to run on that box, <laughs> right? I mean, right. So, so this toolkit seems to me like it's a pretty, pretty cool and invaluable deal, yep. um, you know, especially since we come on site and, and not only give you the tool, but give you all the training that you're going to need to use the tool. Absolutely. Yeah, this is... We've seen a lot of pickup in interest in this, and I have dealt with a lot of customers over the past probably year and a half with this. Um, from a vertical perspective, in the U.S. at least, like the Department of Defense has mandated this right across all of their operating systems. Um, so we see a lot of pickup in the federal government space on this. We're seeing financial sector loves this, right? So I see a lot of financial sector, a lot of healthcare picking up on this as well. Some commercial, um, retail a little bit. Um, but yeah, definitely it's been growing in interest and it's definitely another layer of protection to put on your desktops. And, you know, as my recommended opinion, desktops is where to start with this, not servers. <laughs> um, but definitely an extra layer of protection to protect against things that, you know, your normal antivirus, your firewall, et cetera, is not going to pick up. Yeah. Well, that's cool stuff, and I can't wait to help get the word out. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. And uh, without further ado, that's your Taste of Premiere.